Minister for Finance, as he always does on a Friday afternoon. Luke, good afternoon. Hey, man, are you good? Okay, let's uh, for, look at that. We, we were just uh, speaking to a lady who was uh, trying to get us not to overspend things, and I mm -hmm. suppose in that sense, that dovetails nicely into our chat because you're looking at uh, financial New Year's resolutions, which is something that lady mentioned as well. Yeah, look, I think it's one of those things that, you know, there's there's always a good time to, to make a change in behaviour, and being mid-year, we don't have that foray of Christmas spending and that obligation to go out and buy everything. So I think changing your behaviour in the middle of the, the, the calendar year is obviously a way to stick to something that you're gonna that you're gonna make the most of and obviously then over the next twelve months good behaviours now can then lead into better choices and, and better options leading into 30 June because one thing we did see this year was with the second year in a row of 30 June being on a Sunday, it, it almost created a sense of panic for a lot of people and it doesn't seem to matter how early you tell people to be prepared. Um, they always tend to leave it to the last week. Um, so today we're going to touch on some things that people can think about doing over the next 12 months so that leading into 30 June next year, they've got access to the right amounts of money in the right accounts with the right behaviours to give them the choices so that they can maximise deductions and try and make the most of their situation. It's interesting, Luke, because I noticed a new pressure this year because I'd made a few donations to a few organisations earlier in the year. And of course, Boy, did I get the guilt trip laid upon me by, I think, about 15 or 20 emails from various organisations saying, there's only a week to go, Chris. There's only for, this is the last day, Chris. You can, you can reflect it on your tax return. I'm thinking, I haven't got any day left. I've already mm. given you something. And, of course, people can get trapped in that, can't they? Yeah, look, it's one of those things. You try and do the right thing and make a charitable donation. And there must be a spreadsheet that gets sent around to, to every person collecting cash from, from somewhere. So... Yeah, it's one thing to be mindful of, and you know, there's there's a good time and a place to do that. But it's, it's about, I guess, cherry picking the opportunities that are important to you and, and important to your organisation. So that if you are making, you know, tax deductible donations to something, it's obviously something that's close to your heart, as opposed to the the, the shotgun approach that most people have. Yes, I was um, I was unsubscribing to a number of organisations who were sending me these unsolicited emails. And, uh, no, 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 and of course that can work. That can work as a double negative because people can get quite cranky and then they end up losing potential donors. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, it's always a bit of a happy medium, and you know, you take your hat off to them for trying to do what they do, and it, it wouldn't be an easy thing to try and facilitate it on a daily basis. But no, you know, it has its its purpose nonetheless. But we have the whole situation now, and you, as your uh, your work as a financial advisor, looking and helping people, mm. they're balancing. They said not just donations, but the whole kit and caboodle and the, the financial pressures that people are facing. Yeah, we've had an interest rate cut. Yeah, we're going to get some more money or pay less than what we're going to pay with in relation to our tax. People probably, hopefully, you, one of the bits of advice you're giving is don't get ahead of yourself here. Well, look, I, I, you know, I think if we sort of if we take the first cab out of the out of the list there, you know, why is it a good time to be thinking about things? Too many people leave things too late. So timing is very important. I've always been a big advocate of good behaviour sooner rather than panicking later. Um, because if you do a little bit now through the start of the financial year and continue those behaviours over the next 12 months, leading into 30 June, there's a very good chance that you will have money in the right structure. You will have money in the right bank account. You would have potentially offset some interest on a non-deductible loan. You could have access to money to make it a personal deductible contribution all individual strategies that we've spoken about in previous episodes. But I think the behaviour, and, and, and obviously, you know, think about what you, you're gonna do over the next 12 months. Don't just try and do what your friends have done. I think people actually need to become engaged in the, the change in the behaviour because it's a lot easier to stick to when you actually believe in what you're doing. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a good time to be looking at what you've done in the past. Um, and, you know, I caught the end of the, that lady's episode there where she was talking about you know, having 90 days if you really want something after 90 days, then, you know, I think it's a good way to try and remove that impulse purchase because the biggest thing we find when we talk to people about budgeting and, and you know, we sort of work on, okay, what's our foundation and what are we then going to build off? A lot of people don't know where their money goes. A lot of people don't know what their fixed and variable expenses are. And people have a lot of trouble differentiating between need and want. Um, and, you know, they are two very, very different things. And, and look, I'm, I'm all for spending. Um, I, I think spending and, and rewarding yourself, as we're going to touch on a little bit, is, is part of the broader strategy um, because nobody wants to make wholesale changes that, you know, it's a bit like going cold turkey on a diet. If you can't have, you know, a cheat day or you can't have a meal out and a glass of wine, then, you know, after a while you start to resent that change in behaviour. So we're going to touch on some things that people can do today that 
give them the opportunity to make the most of some changes, but also then reward you along the journey because I think it's a it's a short term, medium term, and long term thing. And I think becoming disenfranchised is the biggest issue in relation to especially making budget changes um, because if you then start to significantly change your lifestyle, people start to resent the way they used to live uh, because they're missing out on opportunities for something that for a, a lot of the younger people out there, oh super, I won't get that for 30 or 40 years, so why should I suffer now? So it's, it's about finding that happy medium of doing a little bit longer because a lot of the legislation that we've seen put forward by the government has actually resulted in thresholds being reduced. It's harder to get money in, there's less money in the system, it's, there's, there's different tests and thresholds that we have to adhere to, um, and they're different age limits. So doing a little bit now can make that longer journey a little bit easier. Um, but it's, it's, it's about being consistent, it's about understanding why, it's about preparing for changes, it's about making the most of legislation, you know, like you said with the tax cuts. Okay, <clears throat> discretionary, not discretionary, interesting point you make there where people are saying, I really need that, is it need or is it want? And I suppose that um, comes on to the next point that we're, we're gonna talk about now, and that is what are some of the key things people could be doing now mm. to make the most of this financial year, which we've just entered into, the 1920, the 2019-2020 financial year? Yeah, look, I think the first cab off the rank comes back to those, those first broader comments about have a budget. Obviously, that then gives you the scope to know what you're working with, what you can afford to do, and how you can make the most of you know, deciding well, what's a priority. I think a lot of people struggle to have priorities in relation to financial decisions because it all becomes too difficult and they all start to mush together and you, know, you can't really differentiate one from another. But you know, if, you, if you have a solid budget, it gives you that foundation to know, okay, where is my money going? What could I be using it for? Um, and even if you do nothing other than save it, you know, one of the other things I've said there is set a savings goal. You know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't matter whether it's a thousand dollars a month, a hundred dollars a month, or ten grand a month. I've got clients that do different things in different scales depending on their personal situation. But for me, it's about that change of behaviour. If you can make a conscious choice to say, right, I'm going to open an account that's separate to my everyday account, and I generally find that's good because you know if you have you know a couple of, of, of lemonades too many on a Friday night and all of a sudden you wake up on Saturday morning with tickets to Coachella, um, there's, a, there's a very good chance that, that your, your planned budgeting has just gone pear-shaped Whoops. because of yeah a couple of extra drinks on a Friday night. So I find if it's not linked to your everyday account, out of sight, out of mind is a very good principle. Mm. Um, and we work with, with people regularly to try and garnish wages um, just to save them from themselves because the, the best thing someone could do is come in and say, look, I've got no self-control. Um, help me help myself. So set up a, a separate account. And if you are gonna set a budget, reward yourself. As I said earlier, this is a long-term thing. You know, you don't have to be living in a tent eating beans. Nobody enjoys doing that for an extended period of time. So set yourself a short-term goal. Set yourself a, a medium-term goal. And then maybe set yourself a goal, you know, to the end of the financial year, but then actually have a clear, a clear purpose of how you will reward yourself. If you can get to a three month number and say, right, have a night out with your friends, go and buy something, get something that you want, reward yourself for committing to that behavior. And similarly on six months, nine months, 12 months, I think rewarding is, is, is one of the things that keeps you engaged and stops you becoming disenfranchised. It's interesting when you talk about that, Luke, because I was mainly thinking of seeing commercials from a number of the banks where they have this off thing where they warn you, you know, when. Uh, a bill's coming up or warn you that your account is about to go into into overdraft, that kind of thing. Um, the trouble is because we've got these machines in our hands, mm. these phones that, that have got access to basically your world, uh, it's so easy to say, when you're a bit bronze and listed, you go, oh, just, uh, it's fine. Um, mm. Uh, look, I'll just buy those tickets for Coachella for 300 bucks each. And exactly that, right. That is, that is the problem. That's, so, and that's, that's actually a real life story. Um, but that, that actually happened to a, a younger client I was working with earlier in the year. He had quite a big night with his mates and found out he booked some tickets to go to America and didn't even remember doing it. So, you know, it can buy oh, a hole in the budget. So, that's all, that, that hurts. You know, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's very important that, you know, we have those behaviours. Uh, you do reward yourself. I build in, um, obviously, make the most of offset accounts. We've talked about the use of offset accounts in previous shows because they are a very good portal for saving because it then gives you the ability to reduce interest on a home loan, which in a lower interest rate environment, people should be doing to make the most of rate cuts. 
uh, but also then it gives you access to money that you could then use to make deductible contributions to super leading into 30 June next year. But yeah. if you've got that money in that account, you've got the choice or the ability to make those decisions to be able to then manage not just your savings profile and your interest costs, but also then obviously tax deductions and, and minimise what you're going to incur. So use the right structures and check your structures. I think some of the other things people should be thinking about this time of year is obviously super splitting. Mm -hmm. Now, where you have an age difference between spouses, a uh, very, very good strategy to try and bring forward the preservation age or the access age for the younger person. So if I've got, if I'm 42 and I've got a 30 year old wife, which I don't, <laughs> but let's just say that I did. True confessions here, she, uh, she should be super splitting to, obviously to my account because I'll get to my preservation age of 60 before her. So that's another way of making sure that you have your accumulated assets in the right name, in the right structure. So yes. that, 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 that of course, folks, for, for, as a reminder that um, super isn't just at the other end of life, it is all of your life. We're gonna take a short break, it's 11 to five here on this uh, program. We're speaking with Luke Smith from Envision Financial. And uh, if you want to, uh, we'll have details about how you can get in touch with Luke about if this is sort of tweaking your uh, conscience a bit, you're thinking, I really should deal with this. We'll give you Luke's details very, very shortly here on Canberra Live. At eight minutes to five o'clock on this uh, Friday afternoon, the fifth day of July 2019, here in the studio with Luke Smith from Envision Financial. And Luke, we were talking before the break about some of the key things people should be doing now, even though they think, oh, the financial year's just started and I've got this whole year in front of me. This really is the key time to set everything up. Yeah, look, I think, again, we touched before the break on some key things people can try and work on, and I think that's that's exactly it, the key things. I think we've, we've talked a lot about fees and charges over the last couple of episodes, and I think at the moment with a new financial year, have a look at your super fund. See what sort of fees and charges you're incurring. You're going to get a 30 June statement from most of the funds over the next coming you know, four or five weeks, so check it out. Have a look at your admin cost. Have a look at your ICR cost. Refer back to, I think it was a show before last, where we talked about fees and charges. When you, um, sorry, when you say ICR costs, what are they? So an ICR is the internal cost ratio. So that's the cost of the investment option that you are in. Okay. So if you're in the balanced option with a certain fund, it'll charge a certain fee. Now, depending on the fund that you're in, that could be 2.5%, could be 0.25%. So it pays to have a bit of a look because if you've got money sitting in a super fund like that and you're incurring fees and charges that are exponentially higher than they need to be, You'd rather find out now than say, oh, well, that's, that's been in there for 10 years. I've got two bob left and now I've got nothing. Yeah. Which so. actually stings me because even though I'm semi-retired, I have superannuation taken out of the work for the work I do here. <laughs> so maybe I should be in touch with that super fund that keeps sending me those lovely emails every four weeks and say, let's have a chat. Well, it's, it's just about understanding. Have a look at your fees and charges. The other thing people should do as well is have a look at your insurances. Check your income protection. You know, if you've had a pay rise, you've got more to lose. Um, and a lot of people set insurances up and then don't review them. So mm -hmm. their situation, their debt, they've got children, they've had salaries, they've maybe had a cash buffer that they've used up to buy a new car. Checking your income protection and its components are very important because everybody needs their income. So that's, that's another one that I think at this time of year, you've got your tax return, you know what you've earned, you can then go into your fund or go to your personal contract and say, right, what am I actually insured for? Because a lot of those things were taken out potentially many, many years ago and have just indexed with CPI and you could have had a significant pay rise, a change of career, you know, there, there's a number of things that could impact the quality of the contract that you maintain and as I say in previous shows we've talked about the key components you should be looking at. Um, get a statement, check it out, make sure that it's relevant to your current situation because I find if I take people's income off them, uh, they find it very difficult to sustain lifestyle for more than generally, you know, one to two months. So check the income protection as well. Um, and the other thing is, if, if you're checking stuff, look, get your wills and enduring powers of attorney done. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I spend a lot of time asking people if they have them, um, and I get a weird and wonderful responses from, yes, I've got those, I've been meaning to get them done, um, and we really should update those because we did them when the kids were born. And I said, oh, well, how old are the kids now? Oh, they're 45. <laughs> um, and, that's, so, and that's something that people don't want to think about now, the end of life decisions. And if you leave that in a mess, yeah. Inevitably, it's going, to, it's going to cause heartbreak and strain and stress yeah. for the kids. Look, you, and could be, you could be there not being able to control the situation. You're exactly right. And the enduring power of attorney is, you know, as most solicitors will say, is really, really powerful document. I liken it to having a mobile phone. When you're out with your mates and your wife friends and says, listen, can you come home? You probably don't want to pick the call up. Um, but when you run out of petrol and you ring your, your, your loving spouse and say, listen, can you, can you come and get me? You're really glad you've got one. 
Absolutely. You know, that's, a, that's a very layman's way of looking at enduring power of attorney, but I think they're super powerful documents that are very underutilized because a lot of people don't assume they need one or they think it's in their will, which is a bit like saying, I'm gonna peel open a banana and find an apple. Well, that's so, exactly right. And then that's something that I've, that both sides of my family have had to deal with you know, yeah. in the last two, last 20 years, and it is so important. Yeah. We're running right out of time, unfortunately, Luke, so thank you once again for coming in this afternoon. If people have heard this and they really start to feel overwhelmed by it all, perhaps they need to be getting in touch with you at Envision Financial. How do they do that? Yeah, look, so you know, you can get us at the website, www.envisionfinancial.com.au. Um, obviously, there's the, the YouTube channel, Envision Financial Canberra. Uh, that where we have all the shows on there and all of the key takeouts yep. uh, so people can pause it and check it and obviously uh, on iTunes we have the strategy stacker you know Luke talks money so if you if they search that they can get the, the podcast of the show again you can stop it you can listen to it in the car and you can you can take out the key parts to make sure that you're actually focusing on what you need over the next 12 months um, and if they've got any other questions obviously 6260 4749 in the office um, they can make a time to come in sit down and see if we can help. There's no charge for the first appointment and Barb makes a mean cup of coffee, so. There we go, 6260-4749. Give them a ring Monday morning and talk to Luke and the team at Envision Financial. Thank you very much indeed, sir, once Pleasure. again. And uh, Luke, we'll be back next week here at 12 by 6 to Double C, where the news is next.